Hello, beautiful. You are listening to Stepping into the Light with your host, that's me, Julia Treat, from juliatreat.com. Welcome, welcome. If you are new to my podcast, welcome. And if you have been listening for a while, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you taking the time to listen to my words. And so many of you reach out and send me beautiful messages, and I really want to thank you for that. I, I do read them all. Sometimes I'm not able to respond to all of them just because of the number of messages I receive. But please know that I am grateful for your love, for your support, your encouragement, and for tuning in every day. Thank you so much. All right, calling all healers. Calling all healers, it's time to step up. I alluded in a recent podcast that I was getting ready to teach my Healing with the Angels and Masters course. And I am going to talk about that some on this podcast. And also I'm going to talk about Reiki. But this is a broad message. I mean, this is just a call out to all of you healers who are either doing healing work currently or have been thinking about it or wondering or seeking a higher purpose. Wherever you find someone to mentor you or walk you into your healing practice, it's time. Whether it's me or it's someone else, it is time. We need you. We all need you to step up. The world needs you. Universe needs you. Stop making excuses. Stop doubting yourself. It's time. When I opened up to my abilities as a medium and angel intuitive in 2008, and for those of you that don't know the story, I'm not going to go through the whole story because there's a podcast about that, but uh, I did open up in 2008 when a dear friend of mine was transitioning to heaven. She was like a second mother to me, and as she was in the hospital dying, this all opened up for me. I mean, I literally could see heaven. I was raking the yard one afternoon after leaving the hospital, visiting her. And I was calling in the angels to just, I said, please be with Jean. I know she's scared. Please help her to not have fear, help her cross easily and effortlessly. And at that moment, like something awakened in me, this vision of heaven and I could see heaven, I could hear it. And let me tell you, they're having fucking parties all the time. It is a party. There's no sadness, there's no grieving, there's no pain, there's no suffering, none of that there. So when I opened up to this, to my abilities to do that, one thing led to another. And then I was led to learning about Reiki and being attuned to Reiki. And then I was, then I learned how to, you know, I became a Reiki master teacher so that I could teach people because I know my true calling is to be a teacher. And nothing lights me up more than, I, sw- I mean, I love, oh my God, I love doing readings. Sto- I love everything I do. Like I was just, I just stopped myself. I'm like, well, I do love to teach. And I love to do readings. And I love to do group readings. And I love to do healing sessions. And I love past life regression. Like I love it all. But that's my point. When I opened up, I had no idea that I was going to be led to some healing modalities so that I could really tune into my healing abilities. I had no idea I'd be led to do past life regression with people and not only become a practitioner and do it with my clients, but then teach others how to do it with people. So just know that your path is always unfolding in front of you and whether or not you decide, hey, I'm taken by the reins this time and I'm jumping in, it's gonna show up again somewhere down the line going to show up again and asking you, are you ready? So let's talk a little bit today about how you can show up as a healer, because there is not just one way. There are many ways to show up as a healer. Some people just walk in a room and they end up healing people. I mean, my whole life, I always heard, you know, there's something about you, Julia. You just bring joy to me when I'm around you. Now, this was even before I opened up to my abilities. So I knew You know, I know looking back that this was my calling to help souls heal, even if it means just sitting next to them and something happens within them. Because 
that actually is what people tell me. Like I just sat by you and something happened. Now I will add that I start my day with praying, praying and meditating and talking to God and the angels. And one of the things I do pray for is that anyone who connects with me in any way, whether you listen to a podcast, you meet me in the grocery store, we hang out, exchange emails, anyone that connects with me, that they receive love, joy, and blessings. So I start my day out with that intent. You all just didn't know it. (laughs) So hopefully you've been receiving little blessings here and there along the way. Um, So you can show up as a healer in many different ways, and there there are so many different healing modalities out there. And I... I honestly don't feel like, oh, this one's better than that one. It's whatever you resonate with. And I'll be honest, I've taken a lot of them. So just to give you a background, I'm attuned to Reiki um, 1 and 2. I'm mas- Then I got uh, attuned or trained as a master teacher. And then I did magnified healing. And then I learned um, IET, integrative uh, <laughs> energy technique, I think. You know what? I don't, I, it's just been so long since I even said that one. And I, and I do believe everything I've learned somehow gets integrated into what I do. Um, I am a theta healing practitioner. I am, I can't even remember if it was level two or three, but I took a few of those classes. And as I moved forward on my journey and I got more in tune with really what was going on in healing sessions and that it's bigger than just me working on someone. So, I mean, we, for those of you that have experienced Reiki, you know, you go to someone, they, they, they work on you with this, they move this beautiful energy through you and help remove any blocks or balance your energies, balance your chakras, help remove physical, emotional, you know, spiritual stuff. It's just whatever it is that you need. But as I moved forward into my, see, I call them, I call my sessions healing sessions only because, yes, it includes Reiki, but there's so much more involved. And again, I'm not saying, hey, boom, I'm bigger than everyone. I'm better. I'm just saying that's just what my healing sessions are about. So sometimes I'm guided to have crystals around people's bodies when, you know, if we're in person. Or I might, um, oh, I won't even say I might. I almost always take my clients on a journey. It's a guided healing meditation, a journey somewhere. And I always ask my client too, if, you know, do you want to just receive and me not say a word and it's just silent? Or would you like to be taken on a, on a, an amazing journey today where miracles are going to occur? Like, it's funny because that's the choice I give them. You know, our healing has so much to do with us looking in the mirror. And when I say looking in the mirror, it's looking at our soul. What are the wounds we need to take care of? Because we can keep going to someone who's working on us and we feel great when we leave. Okay, so uh, yeah, we go, I feel fantastic. And then, huh, well, a week goes by, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Oh, now I feel like shit again. Or I'm getting those aches and pains again. Or this emotional stuff's coming back. Hmm, I gotta go back. And yes, it's good for business. It is. But my goal is that people get massively and miraculously healed and they don't ever have to come back again. That has happened. It's not with everyone, but it has happened many times. So with Reiki, if you are not familiar with Reiki, I'm just going to give you some basics. Um, Now, my course coming up, if it's called, if you are feeling like sh- I am going for it, it's time either I've been doing healing work, but I think I need to kick it up a notch. I don't mean just a notch. We're, we're, we're taking leaps, leaps up. Um, how do I say this? Um, we're we're evol- um, up the spiritual ladder. We're <laughs> up leveling, up leveling spiritually. And so my course is starting May 1st. It's right around the corner. And um, so the first week, in fact, you know what? I should have had this pulled up. I'm just going to tell you what you can expect real quick. 
And um, the first week is learning the history of Reiki, the benefits of Reiki, and the, sorry, I'm trying to talk and look for this at the same time. And you'll be attuned to Reiki 1 and 2 during the first week. Now I am pulling up this link. I apologize. I could just pause this, but I'm just going to, here we go. I found it. Because I want to tell you what to expect. It is four weeks. And no, we're not meeting every day. Uh, you are getting videos and audio from me each week. And then the first week, we actually will schedule your individual attunement for Reiki 1 and 2. Now, let me stress this, that anybody can do this, okay? Anyone can do Reiki. It's just, I like to say it like this. Your soul already knows how to do this healing work. We're just reminding it. And so these attunements actually, I believe, are reminding your soul of what it, what it already knows. So week one is learn the history and benefits of Reiki. Receive Reiki 1 and 2 attunements. Each participant will receive a private one-on-one -on -one attunement with me. And we will do it online through Zoom, face-to-face, -face, video, recorded. I'm attuning you. It is magical craziness. I remember when I was attuned, the visions I saw and the things that I felt, I cried tears of joy. It was amazing. You do not have to be in person for this. Um, that is one of those rules that some people have in their arsenal. That is not true. You know me. I'm not a rule girl. Universe does not have rules. We can get attuned, with, by Reiki, um, attuned to Reiki and be, you know, continents away. <laughs> so week two. So this is why my course is called Healing with the Angels and Masters. I didn't call, it's not called Reiki 1 and 2 Attunement. It is Healing with the Angels and Masters. So here's week two. Get to know the team. The Angels and Masters who will be helping you as a healer. I mean, they have changed my life as a healer and a reader. There are several of these beings, and I will teach you about each of them and how to harness their healing power during your session. Now, I want to say this, whether you're working on yourself or others, because Reiki, you can actually do that with, with yourself. Um, you can give it to your children, to your, your fur babies, to your plants, to your home, to your car, your computer. You can give Reiki to the world, the universe, the galaxies, every, everywhere. Okay, there's no boundaries for Reiki. So you will learn how to tune into the stuff your clients hold on to that is keeping them sick, stuck, and in pain, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. You will learn how to help your client release it all to the universe to ensure complete and often miraculous healing happens for them. Week three, you will begin the journey. Week three, you'll begin to use your healing abilities. You will learn the importance of taking your client on a healing journey, and you will be teaming up with your classmates to begin exchanging your amazing healing energy. Julia will be taking you on several healing journeys during the course so that you can get an idea of how it all works. And um, I will teach you how to do the same for your clients naturally and intuitively. Seriously, this is where the miracles happen. Okay, so week four. So let me just reiterate here. So week one, Reiki one and two attunements. Week two, you're getting to know the massive team that's going to help you be this healer. Okay, you're, you're, gonna, you're part of a team now. Well, some people are. I am. I don't do anything, including readings, without calling my team in. So I will teach you who to call in, what you ask for, because you can be very specific. Even Archangel Michael and his sword, you can be very specific on what he needs to do with that sword. And my clients experience massive shifts, massive healing. Week three, you're using your new skills, your newfound, I say newfound skills, but it's really your old soul skills. You know this. But you're going to start using this with your classmates practicing, and you're going to be floored at what is possible. I, it's crazy when you start working with classmates and they start um, giving you feedback. Like, oh, I feel tingles. Oh, it feels cold there. Oh, it's warm where you have your hands or whatever you're focusing on. And this will be long distance and it's beautiful. It's like you're right there with them. 
Just like this podcast when I'm talking, people say, it's like you're sitting right next to me drinking coffee telling me a story. You are going to have this gift. So week four, the final week of the class. Moving forward with grace and ease. In our final week together, you will learn how to move forward as the healer that you are. You will learn the importance of self-care and how to bring more of it into your life easily. There are so many sick healers in the world, and I will do everything in my power to help you not be that. Seriously, folks, I know so many that are out there doing their healing work, and they're falling apart. They're sick. I, that used to be me. I'm going to give you the tips and tricks on how you stay healthy as the healer. During our last week together, you will also learn how to begin and grow your business. Some of you will be ready to do that. Some of you will still be a little doubtful or scared. That's okay. But you're going to have the little tidbits to get started. You will learn the art of allowing, opening up to all of the magical ways that the universe can help you step into your purpose as a healer. It can all be easy peasy when we learn to do it like this. I learned the hard way, so now you don't have to. And that's the truth. I learned the hard way, and I'm going to make sure that you have it easier, <laughs> that you can learn the easy way. So anyway, that's just a little um, tidbit of what to expect with this course. So I want to, real quick, I don't want to keep, I don't want to like go long, long, long on these. Some people want them longer. So um, here's some things about Reiki that you may not know. Well, I told you before, you can use um, Reiki long distance. You can use it in person. You can... So here's the thing, the Reiki symbols that you will be attuned to. There are symbols that you learn and you actually either draw them out with your hand or you can draw them out, you know, with your mind's eye. You can see them being drawn out. And um, one of them is the power symbol, Chokurei. Chokurei is the power symbol. And I use that symbol a lot. I use it over my own body in certain places. I use it... Um, I've used it, I've drawn it on my dogs. I have used it for my car. I've used it for my computer. I use the choker ray symbol. If I want, um, I do it in corners of my house. If I want my house to feel, I want this power. I draw it on me before yoga. Like there's so many ways you can use choker ray, the power symbol. Uh, the next symbol you will learn is seheiki. It's the emotional and mental balancing symbol. And this symbol helps us feel better emotionally and helps us to connect with our intuition. And by the way, so many of you are, you know, wanting to heighten your intuition. Reiki, whoever you get attuned by, Reiki will blast you forward in your intuitive abilities. It helps you open up. It is amazing. Again, whether it's my course or someone else's, Reiki will shift you, like just catapult you forward. Okay, so the next symbol is the distance symbol, Hon Sha Ze Shonan. And um, that symbol is used when you're sending Reiki to people or animals that are not right with you physically. Again, you use a symbol, boom, you're sending that energy out. It's amazing. And there are certain angels that you call in to work with you when you're using certain symbols. Certain angels are attuned to certain symbols and colors of those symbols. And we will go into detail about that during the course. You will learn the love symbol, hearth. It can be used to send love, release emotional traumas, anger, fear, depression, and even relieve headaches. It can be used to help with and enhance relationships. And it is a powerful symbol from the heart from which all love and healing flows. I love it. Hearth. That's another symbol you're going to learn. These are ancient, I mean ancient, these are old, old sound symbols that you're going to be learning. Zonar is the final symbol you will be learning, and that is for past life and karmic stuff. It works with past life, karmic, and interdimensional issues. Our cells, you've heard me talk about this, our cells can carry past life memories and trauma, and Zonar can help to release those issues, those memories. So if you did not hear me yet, let me reiterate. Reiki is amazing to use on yourself. I give myself Reiki all the time. Well, I'm not going to say just Reiki. I do use other healing modalities on myself, but Reiki is amazing. 
You can be giving yourself Reiki in, 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 in a meeting, at work, in your car, and people won't even know. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. You can use it on your children and, and you know, kids. You can use it on your parents. You can use it on your plants, your animals, your pets, your house, your car. Going into situations, experiences. You can send Reiki to, the, to those. So... I hope that at least helps you get an idea, at least a little bit more about Reiki anyway. And again, that is the first week of my healing course. The healing course is a do it on your own time course with live calls each week. You will be on a live call with me each week and I will be blasting you <laughs> with this, um, I don't even know, this healing mojo. I'm just seeing rays of light going to you. That's why I called it Healing Mojo. And helping you step into this amazing and beautiful purpose. Whether your purpose is to be a healer or maybe it's just to use it on yourself and your family. It is kind of fun, to be honest. My nephews, um, you know, I stayed with them for a while or go visit from time to time. And, you know, one of my nephews gets hurt a lot. I mean, he plays so many sports. And so he does get hurt often. And uh, when I was there, it, it never fails. When I'm there, last time I was there, he was, I think he was in, yeah, he was playing football. It was a football game. And he did get, his wrist got like, like a sprain. And I was staying with them at the time. And we got home. He was taken out of the game. We got home and he just, Aunt Julia, because I, I had already worked on him before in the past, but he walked up with his wrist held out. He's like, Aunt Julia, can you do that thing you do? You know that thing where I just don't hurt anymore? And so I sat down on the couch, and I worked on him for about 10 minutes. Probably about 10, and he's watching TV. I'm just working on him, and I'm watching TV. And we got done, and he started moving around, and he was like, I can't believe it doesn't hurt. Like, he rolled it around. He's like, it doesn't hurt at all. Now, that's the benefit, I'm just going to point out, of doing this at the acute stage of an, an incident when it's just brand new and his wrist didn't have time to get into that pattern or that memory of, I can't move this way. I can't move that way. I, I gave him Reiki and, and helped him heal that. And he was in zero pain after that. Seriously. Like, I kid you not. If you heard my story about Sam, the horse, that is all due to Reiki. Sam, the horse that was dying. I think the podcast is called What It Means to Be, capital B-E, a Healer. And I want you to just realize that your healing journey can go in, oh, so many different directions. I would have never thought that I was going to go a tuna horse and that horse was going to change my life forever. I just got chills even saying that because he allowed me to realize that miracles truly do happen. I've witnessed others, but to see it with a horse, like it was my first time working with a horse, blew me away. So there are no limits to this. It's time to step up. If you decide to take my course, I'm going to put the link in the description of this podcast. I don't have it yet on my website under courses. You can click on courses, but it's not listed there. I hope to have it there in the next day or two. But it will be in the description in this podcast. That is the link you'll need to go. And if you want to go read about the entire course, there's a lot more information. And um, I have all kinds of different payment plans. I'm trying to do it as easy as I can for all of you so that you can all get in if you or whoever can, whoever wants to. Um, I did put a little bonus, though. If you pay in full, you do get a free healing session with me. And I will be taking you on one of those journeys that you're going to learn how to do. So as I'm teaching the course, you will get scripts. You'll have these scripts that you can take people on these journeys. But you're going to find that after a while, you don't need them anymore. You're intuitively taking them on this journey. It's a cool, cool thing. One of the journeys I take people often to is into the Angel's Crystal Healing Palace. And the masters and angels that come in to work with them, including Jesus and Mother Mary, and I'm going to teach you how to do that. Like, they're ready and willing and right there to help you. You're going to know exactly how they come in. It's amazing. All right. I, well, I'm going to send some massive uh, Reiki love to you right now, all of you. I pray that miracles and blessings just 
just flow your way at all times. I'm honored to be a part of your journey. Thank you so much. Namaste.